Welcome back. So Google says it has developed an artificial intelligence system that can detect breast cancer more accurately than doctors. The program was developed using tens of thousands of mammograms from women in the US and UK. A report found it reduced false positives and false negatives. Daniel Tse and Shravya Shetty are the product manager and technical lead at Google Health. They join me now from San Francisco. Great to have you on the show. Happy New Year and congratulations on your findings and the development of um, this uh, new technology. Thank you. Okay. Happy New Year. So it's fascinating to see um, how the detection of cancer using AI is far better than doctors and you're using less information to do this. How does it work? Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Uh, so at a high level, we use two principles. One, which is similar to what radiologists might do in practice, which is they look at these mammograms and find small lesions on them. And then we aggregate all this information and then predict the breast cancer risk. The other principle that we used is to look at the images globally, which is look at all the context in the images and then predict breast cancer. And then we combine the two to predict the final risk. That's pretty incredible. Okay, so Daniel, tell me about why you started with this uh, and, and, and what kind of impact you can make to the oval industry. That's a great question. You know, we, a couple years ago, our team got together and uh, started looking at a number of different problems to potentially tackle. And so we're lucky at Google to have access to a lot of you know, machine learning and computer vision technology that's been used on a lot of different products across the world. And we wanted to find ways of taking that technology and applying it to new areas. And so we looked at a number of areas and eventually settled on medical imaging. Uh, when thinking about medical imaging, there's lots of problems you can look at, but some of the greatest are often screening programs for cancer. And so we naturally started looking at breast cancer, which is, has a huge impact on a lot of women around the world. That's incredible. Okay, so how are these X-ray machines going to be retrofitted, so to speak, using AI? I mean, how exactly can it be implemented today in the medical industry? What's the plan? I think there's, that's a great question as well. There's a lot of different ways it can be, can be implemented. I think the next stages of our research are actually going to be looking at a lot of those questions. Like, what's the best way of technically refining the model? What are the best ways of surfacing that model in a way that is the most productive for patients, providers, and healthcare systems? Um, the concrete plan is still in flux, and it depends a lot on the healthcare system and the screening program. But uh, we're very excited to work with our partners around the world on it. And there are many ways of integrating this into a workflow. It could be on the hardware side, but could also be on the software side. So it doesn't necessarily require a retrofitting into existing hardware. So these are interesting findings, Travia, but you know, what is it going to take to actually get it into the system? Are we talking about it being years away? Are we looking at you, know, you guys thinking of teaming up with various companies? How do you plan to actually do this? I think a lot of those options are on the table. And yeah. a lot of it depends on you know, the particular application that we're building. But we're eager to work with patients, providers, regulatory groups like the FDA or uh, the CE groups in Europe to better understand how they'd like to see these experiments played out so they can uh, recommend or not. I was just looking at the numbers as well through you know, some of the work that you've done and we saw a, quite a dramatic reduction in fo false positives as well as fo false negatives as well. Um, and this is a game changer for women that are misdiagnosed, which happens way too often. Take us through some of the findings that were pretty shocking to you. Yeah. Uh, so overall, like you pointed out, the numbers look quite encouraging on yeah. both the false positives and false negatives. Uh, something that was very encouraging for us is we saw that the AI did well, not just on the data that it was trained on. Uh, we trained the models on UK data and evaluated it in US. And these are very different screening populations, yeah. the screening protocols are different, and we found that the AI still performed really well. It was still outperforming the radiologists by a significant margin. Okay, so what, was very so what are radiologists and doctors doing incorrectly? I think it's not necessarily that they're doing anything incorrectly. I think it's, it's a tough task to be taking these images. Uh, you yes. know, when you get a mammogram, you're actually not getting one image, you're getting yeah. uh, four images or more. And you have to take that into context, you have to take in past imaging into context, a lot of other clinical contexts that might come between screening programs and screening uh, periods, rather. Yeah. And so 
you know, it's that plus doing that task all day. And so, uh, if anything, one of the goals of our research is to build tools to assist these yeah. doctors what, with that very What, tough what really stuck out for me as well is that you're using less information. And we know that radiologists also tend to look at family history, you know, the possibility of, you know, it being hereditary and so forth. Do you think that using less information or not even just looking at background information uh, gives a cleaner result in a sense? Uh, not necessarily, because in, at the end of the day, we're not expecting the AI to stand alone. Mm -hmm. We expect it to work with the doctors. So which means, at the end of the day, you do have this information available. Can doctors be replaced? Will they be replaced? Uh, so, like Dan had mentioned a little bit earlier, we don't think that uh, it's, it's one versus the other. Yeah. Uh, in fact, what we saw in our results is there's a number of cases where the AI gets it right and the doctors don't, but there's also a number of cases where the doctors get it right and the AI don't. I think they can complement each other and bringing the two together is what can help bring out the strengths in each. Um, so it's exciting times for Google Health. What other projects are you working on and is AI and machine learning at the center of this? Yeah, there's lots of applications. Obviously, what we're talking about right now is medical imaging. Actually, our team published a paper earlier this year in Nature Medicine looking at lung cancer screening. And so we're very encouraged by a lot of these results and want to explore a lot of other areas where we can use imaging uh, to help with current clinical workflow. Travia and Daniel, thank you very much and all the best.